Now is the time to start your vegetable transplants like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, and for some of you who like a challenge, even cucumbers, maybe watermelons, and cantaloupes. Now this is the tail end of our cold vegetable transplants, our cold crops like broccoli, and we've got them planted at different times so we don't have everything coming off at the same time. And you know, we found that a lot of gardeners like to keep seeds possibly from the previous year. And if you're going to do that, you need to do a little simple seed germination test to make sure that your seed is still viable. And the best way to do that is just count out, say, like 20 seeds of whatever you're going to plant and either put it in a moist paper towel like we've done these cucumber seeds or even in cotton or even a coffee filter will, works real well and put it in a plastic bag. Now, if it's a warm season plant, it's going to need some heat and some warmth to help get it to germinate pretty quick. Out of the 20, say if you have 15 germinate, just do everything like you normally would. But if 10 of those 20 germinate, that means you need to double up on your seeding rate because you've only got about a 50% germination rate. And if only 5 of those should germinate, then I would pitch them and start over and buy you some fresh seed. And you know, when we talk about seeds, we think of it really as something very simple and we kind of take it for granted, kind of like this bean seed. But you know, this really is a miracle, and this is really a good starting point to get your kids involved. Well, we recently found a very interesting tool that was developed by the Master Gardeners from Washington State University. I'd like to introduce you to Irby or Herbie, the seed puppet. Now, some of you probably think that I've lost my mind, but this is a very simple way to involve your kids to teach them about the very complicated process of seed germination. And if you'll imagine, this is a seed coat or a seed. And once we plant that seed, we don't really think about what all is involved or inside that seed. But to start with, obviously, it needs moisture. And as the moisture absorbs into the seed, the seed coat starts to swell. And the very first thing that comes out is the root system. Now, it's also referred to as a hypocotyl, which starts taking up moisture and causes a seed coat to expand even more. And eventually, that seed coat comes off. Well, also inside the seed are what we call cotyledons, and those are already there. And this is the first step to Irby. Well, then those cotyledons start taking up sunlight, and that causes the first true leaves to grow. And we'll just place that right here. And then the seed, the whole purpose of it is to complete its life cycle. So the next logical stop or step is for it to put on a flower, and then after it flowers, the flower is going to put on a seed pod. And so we'll put the seed up there. And, and again, we've completed an entire life cycle just out of that one little seed. Now let's show you how that looks in real life. And we've got some bead seeds here. And again, if we'll show you this, this was inside the seed coat. And this is the cotyledons, again, inside this little small seed. All of those things existed. These are our first true leaves, and then remember the first thing to emerge was the root system or the hypocotyl. So all of that was in that bean seed, and once it starts to germinate, then it takes up all the other nutrients so it would grow into the plant. Now you might ask, how does it go about doing that from the one seed? Well, there's carbohydrates and certain nutrients that are stored in the seed to help feed it, and really water is a key thing to trigger it. So again, this is a great project, again, very simple, but it really catches the younger kids' attention and gets them involved in gardening.